Hello students, how are you all doing? I hope all of you are doing really well. So in today's class, we are going to study the chapter Packing, which is from your Beehive book. Packing is written by Jerome K. Jerome, which is an extract from the novel Three Men in a Boat. Now, we will know something about the author. Jerome K. Jerome was born on 2nd May 1859 in Calmore, England. He was an English writer and humorist and best known for the comic travelogue Three Men in a Boat, which was written in 1889. He died on 14 June 1927. So this chapter, Packing, which we are going to read in today's class is taken as an extract from his very famous travelogue which is Three Men in a Boat. Before you read, let me ask you a question. Do you like going on trips? Yes? Most of you will say yes because we all enjoy going on trips. Now, what kind of trips do you enjoy the most? Yes? Some of you will say road trips, you know, uh, packing all your goods into a car and going out with your family or friends and, you know, enjoying weekend in a good place. You can also like uh, long trips, long, you know, summer vacation trips or winter vacation trips where you go to your grandmother's place and you stay there, you know, and have a very good time, very good vacation. Okay. Now, have you ever discovered on a trip that you have forgotten to pack a few things you very much need or that you can't find them easily? So, I think uh, we all must have, you know, uh, been through this, uh, this phase. We sometimes forget to pack certain essentials we, which we need, which we uh, really need. They can be our, uh, you know, toothbrush or they can be a towel, right? And it's very difficult without these essentials. So uh, like this is a um, phase which we all have experienced that we forget to pack or sometimes if we have packed it, we don't find it on time. Does this make you angry or does it make you laugh at yourself? So certainly when you don't find the thing at the right time, Right, you will feel frustrated, you will feel angry. But maybe later you can laugh at yourself remembering the time, isn't it? So now let's start reading the chapter. Now, let's read the description of how the author and his friends pack. I said I would pack. I rather pride myself on my packing. So here you can see the picture of Jerome K. Jerome and he is saying that I said I would pack. Okay, because he wanted to pack because he rather pride himself on his packing skills. He was proud of it. Packing is one of those many things that I feel I know more about than any other person living. So he's claiming that packing is one of those many things, okay, that you feel that he knows better than any other person living. It surprises me myself sometimes how many such things there are. So the author is surprised that how many such things there are that he knows better than any other person living and packing being one of them. So he's really proud of himself, you know, that I can pack really well. I'm a really good packer. I impressed the fact upon George and Harris and told them that they had better leave the whole matter entirely to me. So since uh, George was really proud of his packing skills, he impressed. Impressed means told with emphasis. Okay. So he told with emphasis that, please leave the packing entirely to me. 
I'll do it. So the two friends that we are talking about in this chapter are George and Harris. Okay. And the third person obviously you know is the narrator Jerome K. Jerome. Yes. They fell into the suggestion with a readiness that had something uncanny about it. So as soon as the author said that, okay, you just leave the matter of packing entirely to me. What happened then? The two friends, okay, George and Harris, they agreed to it. They accepted. Okay, fine, you do it. Okay, so they were like, okay, I don't, uh, I don't care whoever packs. So they were okay about it. But author sensed that there is something uncanny. Uncanny means strange or weird. So, the moment they accepted the fact or accepted the, you know, opinion of uh, Jerome that he should do the packing, he, uh, like uh, Jerome felt that there is something weird about it. George spread himself over the easy chair and Harris cocked his legs on the table. So, his friend Jerome has taken the responsibility of packing. So these two friends, they were like enjoying their time, you know. George spread himself over the easy chair. As you can see in the picture, how he is relaxing over the rocking chair, isn't it? And Harris has cocked his legs on the table. As you can see, his sitting posture, right? So you can understand that they both were having a good time. They don't have to worry about the packing. This was hardly what I intended. What I had meant, of course, was that I should boss the job. So, uh, like George and Harris, they did not want to pack. They, have, they were having a good time. They were sitting and relaxing. But this was not the intention of Jerome. When he said that, leave the matter entirely to me. Rather, he meant was, what he meant was that he should boss the job, okay? And that Harris and George should potter about under my directions. I pushing them aside every now and then with, oh, you, hey, let me do it. So, potter about means do some unimportant things, okay? So, uh, the, the narrator, he wanted to boss the job, okay? He wanted to supervise the job of packing. He wanted to give directions to George and Harris. And okay, now, please pack this way, there, okay? You do that, you do this. So, he wanted to give instructions and directions. There you are, simple enough, really teaching them, as you might say. They're taking it in the way they did irritated me. So Jerome was really, you know, uh, had an intention of teaching them how to do packing, giving them directions. Yes, there you are, simple enough. But they did not understand what Jerome meant and this behavior of theirs irritated Jerome. There is nothing does irritate me more than seeing other people sitting about doing nothing when I am working. So the narrator is saying that this irritates me a lot when I am doing some work and people around me, they are just sitting idle, they are doing nothing and I am doing hard work. So this action of others really irritates Jerome. I lived with a man once who used to make me mad that way. He would loll on the sofa and watch me doing things by the hour together. So now he is remembering our incident and he is telling us that he used to live with a man once who used to make him mad that way. Which way? By doing nothing and just relaxing on the sofa and watch me doing things by the hours together. So, Jerome used to work and man used to just loll on the sofa. Loll on the sofa means lean in a relaxed way. And he just watched Jerome working, doing things. 
He said it did him real good to look on at me, messing about. Now, I'm not like that. I can't sit still and see another man slaving and working. So he is saying that I'm not like that. I am not like others. I can't see that other people are working and I'm just sitting and relaxing. This is not my this is not me. Okay. Messing about means to spend time doing things that are not useful or serious. Okay. I want to get up and superintend and walk around with my hands in my pockets and tell him what to do. It is my energetic nature. I can't help it. So now he's saying that I'm not like others. I can't sit. I can't sit and see others are slaving themselves. Rather, what I want to do, I want to get up and superintend, which means to supervise and walk around with my hands in my pockets and tell him what to do. It is my energetic nature. So here you can see the author has used some kind of humor, isn't it? That I can't sit and see, rather I want to get up and supervise. This is my energetic nature. He can't help it. Okay, let's move forward. However, I did not say anything, but started the packing. It seemed a longer job than I had thought it was going to be. But I got the bag finished at last and I sat on it and strapped it. So the narrator is saying that I did not say anything to whom? To Harris and George. Rather, he started doing packing. It seemed a longer job than he had actually expected. But lastly, he had finished packing and he uh, sat on the bag and strapped it. So, yeah, can you tell me why did Jerome had to sit on top of the bag and then strap it? Strap it like is like uh, close it. Hmm? Can you tell me? Yes. When the bag is um, like really full, you can't really close it. So you have to sit on it and then strap it. Like we all have done this, isn't it? So we generally tend to pack more than the capacity, capacity of the bag. And then we find it hard to close. So we have to sit on it and then strap it, then close it. Ain't you going to put the boots in? Said Harris. And I looked around and found I had forgotten them. That's just like Harris. He couldn't have said a word until I had got the bag shut and strapped, of course. And George laughed. One of those irritating, senseless laughs of his. They do make me so wild. So, when just, just when he has completed packing, okay, and he strapped the bag, the, uh, he f then Harris makes a comment that aren't you going to put the boots in? Then the author realized that he has forgotten to pack the boots. That's just like Harris. Why just like Harris? Because Harris did not say a word until the bag was shut and strapped. And to this comment of Harris, George started to laugh. And this made him so wild. This made Jerome so wild. Wild means mad with anger. That if they are so good, good friends of mine, why can't they tell me before I strap the bag? So, can you tell me why did they do that? on purpose. Yes, you know, because Harris uh, and George, they think they wanted to mock at, uh, at Jerome. They wanted to show Jerome that he is not a good packer and he had left his boots out. Okay, let's continue reading. I opened the bag and packed the boots in and then just, I was, just as I was going to close it, a horrible idea occurred to me. My toothbrush is a thing that haunts me when I'm traveling and makes my life a misery. So haunts here means to repeatedly give trouble. And misery is a state of feeling of great physical or mental discomfort. 
So Jerome is saying that my toothbrush always gives me trouble and always makes my life, a, you know, misery. I'm never sure whether I have packed my toothbrush or not. I dream that I have not packed it and wake up in a cold perspiration and get out of bed and hunt for it. So here, Jerome is explaining that what happens to him when he is about to travel, he always have a dream that he has not packed his toothbrush. And he wakes up sweating all over, gets out of his bed and starts looking for the toothbrush. Okay. And in the morning, I pack it before I have used it and have to unpack again to get it. And it is always the last thing I turn out of the bag. And then I repack and forget it and have to rush upstairs for it at the last moment and carry it to the railway station wrapped up in my pocket handkerchief. So Jerome is trying to explain you know, what happens with his toothbrush. He always forgets to pack it at the right time. And somehow he has to carry his toothbrush wrapped up, you know, covered up, you know, in his pocket handkerchief. Of course, I had to turn every mortal thing out now. And of course, I could not find it. So now here he is looking for his toothbrush. You know, the horrible idea that occurred to him. He has now started to hunt for his toothbrush. So for that, he has to take out everything, every ordinary thing from the back. And of course, he was not able to find it. I rummaged the things up into much the same state that they must have been before the world was created. And, one, and when chaos reigned. I rummaged. Rummage means to search in a hurried or careless way. You know, he was, what happens when you're in a hurry or you're looking for something which is important to you and you're not getting it. You just look here and there. You are, you know, searching in a very careless way, in a very hurried way. So that is known as rummaged. So he rummaged the things up because he was looking for his toothbrush. And it was nowhere to be found. He couldn't find it. He could not find it in the bag. And he's saying that uh, chaos. Chaos here means confusion. And drained means ruled. So he has made things so worse. He has taken everything out of the bag. And there was confusion all over. You know, the things were taken out of the bag. And the, the, the situation was really um, confusing. It looked very messy. Of course, I found George's and Harris's 18 times over, but I could not find my own. So here, it's really funny that when he was looking for his own toothbrush, he couldn't find it. But he found George's and Harris's toothbrush more than 18 times, but he was not able to find his own. I put the things back one by one and held everything up and shook it. Then I found it inside a boot. I repacked once more. So, in order to search for his toothbrush, he held everything up and started to shake it. Shake it because if it is was if it was inside it, it will fall down. So finally, he found that the toothbrush was inside a boot. Then he had to repack repack once more because he had taken everything out of the bag when he was searching for his toothbrush right okay let's move uh, let's move ahead and read that chapter when i had finished george asked if the soap was in i said i didn't care a hang whether the soap was in or whether it was not so just when he had finished packing you see how naughty this um, George is. Okay, just when the, uh, he finished packing, he's asking. 
hey, is the soap inside the bag? Then Jerome got so irritated, he said, he's saying that, I don't care. I'm giving no importance to soap. I really don't care if the soap was in the bag or whether it was not in the bag. So by this point, you can see Jerome was really irritated. And I slammed the bag shut and strapped it and found that I had packed my spectacles in it and had to reopen it. It got shut up finally at 10 5 p.m. So when he said that I don't really care whether the soap was inside the bag or not and he slammed. Slammed means shut something forcefully and loudly. So can you tell me why did he slam the bag? Jerome? Yes, because he was, you know, very angry. He was frustrated, irritated because he was doing packing. Then he forgot something. He had to open it, then again pack it, then again open it, then again pack it. So by this point of time, he was really frustrated. And just when he, uh, you know, closed the bag, he found that he had packed his spectacles in it. So obviously, he had to again open it. And finally, the bag was shut at 10.05 p.m. And then there remained the hampers to do. So hampers are those large baskets which are used for carrying food. So you can see in the first picture, there's a large, I think, jute basket kept, right? And there are some of uh, food kept inside the hampers. Harris said that we should be wanting to start in less than tw 12 hours time and thought that he and George had better to do the rest. And I agreed and sat down and they had a go. So now the packing, the Jerome has really completed his packing. Only the hampers were left to be packed. Hampers, you know, I told you the basket for carrying the food. Now, Harris said that we have to start in less than 12 hours time. And Harris and George should do the rest of the packing. Means the hampers. And I agreed. So, Jerome agreed to it and sat down. Because he also wanted to rest for some time. He had really labored hard. In packing and they had a go they had a go means they started to do the packing they began in a light-hearted spirit evidently intending sh to show me how to do it I made no comment I only waited so Harris and George they began in a very light-hearted spirit very cheerful oh it's just hampers we can do it we are good packers, isn't it? So they are very cheerful, they are very happy. Let's do this, let's do the pampers. But they were cheerful, they were showing, you know, they were intending to show Jerome that how to do it. How to do it means how to do the packing. I made no comment. So Jerome did not make any comment. He only waited for the right time because he knew that they are also going to fail when they'll start packing. With the exception of George, Harris is the worst packer in the world, in this world. So, Jerome knows that, okay, let it be about G uh, George. He's not, he's not making any comment on George. But he's saying that Harris is the worst packer. I mean, he, he don't know how to pack. He will just mess up things. Okay. And he's the worst packer in this whole world. And I looked at the piles of plates and cups and kettles and bottles and jars and pies and stuffs and cakes, cakes and tomatoes, etc. So jo Jerome is only looking at the things, you know. There were piles of plates and cups and kettles and whatnot. And he felt that thing would soon become exciting. Okay. So he knew that certain exciting things awaits. You know, they are going to create some kind of mess. Okay, Jerome already had that idea that they are going to make things really interesting and really exciting because he saw, you can see in this picture, he saw what? He saw piles of plates and cups and kettles and pies and bottles and cakes and tomatoes and whatnot. So he knew looking at these things that they are really going to 
do something exciting okay so students in this class we will read the chapter till here only and so far we have seen that jerome was really a clumsy packer isn't it and he was really disorganized he kept things here and there then he searched for it he forgot to put the boots in then he forgot his spectacles inside the you know, inside the bag so these things show us that he was really a he was not a really a good packer i don't know why he was very proud of his packing skills and in the next part we will see whether george and harris are better packers or not so what do you think will they be able to pack in a better way as compared to jerome or are they also going to mess things up okay that we will see in the next class so before ending the class we will discuss some of the questions to you know to see how much we have understood so far okay so the first question is name the two friends of jerome all of you know right the two friends were george and harris good what was jerome rather proud of so we all know that right he was proud of his packing skills why did the narrator volunteer to do the packing so you remember jerome said that they should leave the entire the matter of packing entirely on him so the narrator was proud of his packing skills he wanted to show off his skills to his friends so he volunteered to do the packing what irritates jerome the most seeing other people sitting and doing nothing when he is working hard irritates him the most so i told you right that there he used to live with a man who used to loll on the sofa and that really irritated him when he was working what horrible idea came to the author when he had packed the bag so the horrible idea was whether he had packed his toothbrush or not at what time did the author pack up the bag finally so do you remember that the bag was finally packed at 10:05 pm yes according to jerome who was the worst packer in the world so do you remember whether it was george or harris yes he says that with the exception of george harris was the worst packer in the world so that's the end of the class students and we will see what happens next in the next class okay bye and take care